Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm going to talk you through the Sable test patches which we've released to enable you to have a quick play with some of the functionality and a few of the articulations from the Sable Strings Library, which is the first release in our British Modular Library series. Um, we'll assume that you've downloaded the RAW file already. It's 1.58 gigabytes, um, and then I'm using this shareware program UnRAWX um, to unra the, the file. It's very straightforward to do this on a Mac or a PC. Um, there are a load of utilities available to do this. So you can use um, your utility of choice to get the files out and you'll see that it's expanding here into the same folder. So I'm going to cut through to the end now. So it's expanded into our library folder here. We have um, the instruments the demo instruments here, we have our script files here, and then the samples folder with the samples that for these uh, patches. The patches do have a reduced functionality, um, but you'll see as, as we go into those, you'll see um, how those work and how we've got them set up. So we're going to have a look at the Celli first. This is three players. Um, you'll see that we've given you four articulations to play with and just three of the seven mic positions here. The mics that you have um, in these demo patches are the close mic, the Decca tree mics, which is where the conductor stands slightly behind the conductor position and um, high, high up in the air, but not too high. The ambient mics are higher up and slightly further back and they get you get a much more ambient sound from those. Um, other mic positions in the full library are the outriggers, which are at the same uh, height as the tree but further out to each side, so that gives you a kind of extra width for the tree. We have a close ribbon selection, which is um, a really great, uh, slightly more vintage sound. We have a, st a stage set, which is a stereo pair as a kind of alternative to the tree. It's a, a bit of a different kind of sound in this different sort of stereo field. And then we have gallery mics, which are much further back in the hall higher up and provide a very distant sound. In addition to those we've got a stereo mixes um, set which has three different uh, stereo mixes with different kind of applications and three stereo um, surround uh, mixes as well so you've got your surround options there as well. So there's a huge amount of, of variety in there. I'm going to give you a quick um, listen through to so you can hear immediately the, the difference in sound. So the close mics um, they're seated in position, the close mics are set to the right position. That's the Decca tree, that provides a really useful writing starting position. And then the ambience, you can hear that that's a, that's a kind of more distant sound. So between these three you can get an incredible variety of sound there. Now, let's go through some of the controls in more detail. So you can see that I'm clicking and unclicking these little memory chip icons here to load and unload or purge as we call it in contact the um, the actual samples there. There is another way of doing this which is to drag this volume slider on the microphone position down to the bottom and it will purge the samples and then if you drag it back up again it reloads them automatically. So the, between these um, these Let's have a look at that. So if we set those both to full, it sounds like that. You can pull the tree mics right down and get a closer sound with a little bit of ambience. Or we can alter the balance, put the tree up full, a little bit of close, which is quite a nice level there. Maybe we want no close at all and a little bit of ambient. So the the availability of, of kind of different kind of colouring options here is is quite vast. Um, we have the same memory chip icons beneath the articulations, so you can unload or load those as you wish. And then there are a couple of extra controls there, so that if, for example, you wanted to, um, if you want to go in finer detail, you can hold down the Shift key, and that enables you to drag in much more detail. If you want to prevent a mic from purging or loading, you hold down the Alt key. So if I drag that down to the bottom, it's no longer load, uh, purging. And if I drag this one up, it's no longer loading. So that alters the loading and purging behavior. 
and then if I hold down the control or command, command on the Mac, control on the PC, it resets to 100%. So you just click that and it sets them all up to the top. Also, if you hold down the command or on the PC control key uh, while clicking one of the chip icons, it will load that one and purge everything else. So in this context, we've loaded the uh, ambient mics and it's purged everything else. Again, you can do it like that. Or if we do it down here, everything else is purged if I command or control click that memory chip. So I'm going to load everything else up for now. So that's the basic, um, oh here we go, let's talk about this. This little icon here takes us into the stereo collapse page for the close mics. So let's put the close mics up and turn everything else off. Now you'll hear that that's in position and it's the close mics. If we want to move that around or do something else, we can use these controls. So stereo width default is a central position. If I drag it all the way to the left, it collapses its mono and then I can pan it. So if I wanted it on this side instead, so and then again you can command click to reset those to the defaults. So that's a very useful little tool there. You can change the apparent position of the of the instrument group within the hall just by using that on the close mics. There's also a useful little icon here, these notes. If I click that so it's lit, I'm now controlling the mic positions on an individual articulation basis. So the spiccatos are full close and no tree or ambience. If I want to change for the pizzicatos so that they are mainly tree, even no close, then I can do that. As you'll notice when I dragged that down to the bottom it unloaded the close. So if I want to alter that then obviously I would hold down the Alt key and drag it to the bottom. So I still get no close but I haven't unloaded those samples. And now you'll hear that the spiccatos are fully close, whereas the pizzicatos are fully tree. So that's another useful control there. I'm going to turn that off now and we'll reset those so that they purge. So the next control in our list, we looked at purge unused. The presets are um, they're more useful in, in the full library, but they show you basically you can quickly grab the articulations that you need and the combination of mics that you need. There's a couple of really useful presets in there for, for when you've got the full library. We can click to switch on transpose and move the keyboard around so that, um, the, that we're transposing the MIDI input. And we can also use the CC1, the mod wheel, to control velocity of the short notes um, instead of the actual velocity that you're hitting the keyboard with. So at the moment, if I I can alter that with, with the, the force with which I hit the keyboard. If I turn that on, you can see down here the mod wheel is, is now um, controlling. So if I pull the mod wheel right down. So you can also see the mod wheel moving over here. The reason for that is because the mod wheel is default assigned to dynamics for the long notes. So if we switch to the long notes and I move the mod wheel, you can see that slider moving. So that's, um, that's the default for controlling the dynamic with which the sound is played back. You can remove that by clicking, by control clicking um, or right clicking on the PC um, and clicking that remove and then you'll see it's gone now. And we can relearn a different CC by clicking again, control, cl uh, control clicking on the Mac or right clicking on the PC and then just move the controller that you want. I'm going to move the mod wheel because I want to reset it to the mod wheel. And now if I control click again, you'll see that it's back at CC1. Vibrato is set by default to CC21. Um, speed, which we'll come to in a minute, is 16. And then expression is just CC11. And that's an overall volume control that's set on every single patch. So that's, some, some doors have a problem with multi-timbral instruments and CC7. So we've set up CC11 to use as a, an overall volume control for everything. It's just an additional control there. So if we look um, now at vibrato, I've got that set up on my own MIDI controller pad here. So I'll just show you the effect of that.
we start with non-verb and then as I slide it up you'll hear that it comes in and again if I slide it fully on down and now we're at fully non-verb so that's an incredibly useful control for controlling the amount of vibrato that you're hearing back in the in the with the players. The speed control, let's look at legato now. The way that you enable a legato transition in our libraries is to overlap the notes. And this is quite a standard way of doing a monophonic legato. So if I just play obviously that's not going to play legato. But if I overlap the notes So I'm holding down one note while I press the next note, so they all overlap. And you can do that if it's if it's a bit tricky to do um, with your, you know, if you're not really a keyboard player, you're more of a wind player or a string player, then you can just you can just play the part and then go into edit your the notes in your in your track and just overlap them slightly, and you'll see that that enables the legato transition to, to occur. Now the speed, we've only put one transition into here to keep the kind of file size of this download down, which is the basic fingered, finger change transition. Um, in the full library you have a bow change transition where the bow actually changes direction for the transition uh, from one note to the next, and that gives you a much more of a kind of um, detached sound. And then we also have a portamento transition when you play softly that's enabled and that has um, a much more um, kind of fluid you know you can hear really hear the finger sliding on the fingerboard and that is probably the one that you hear the biggest change on the speed control and the speed control if we think of it as full speed and slow um, it's continuous but that's the easiest way to work out whether you, you want to be at the left hand side or the right hand side so let's let's imagine we're playing a slow part Let's put the close mics in so that we can really hear what's going on here. So if we have um, if we have the speed up full, you'll hear it's quite an agile sound. You can play quite quickly with with this um, set on far on full, but if we pull it right down to the bottom, we're going to hear much more of the transition. So you're going to hear the player preparing to change notes. There's a slight bump as they push down on the bow where the finger gets ready to move. The finger moves and you hear the full, all that kind of processing taking place um, as, as the note changes. So it's a very, let's play something more leisurely and you'll hear what I mean. So it's actually quite, let's, let's be a little bit excessive on the old um, close mics there. Let's, let's play and actually move these controllers to try and get the effect that we want. So I'm going to leave it mainly up there for speed. And as I, as I really want a note to kind of have a, um, a, definite, a, definite, a definite sound of the change in there, I'll pull it down. So here we, let's play something and, and try fiddling around and see how we go. So you can hear there's a couple of moments there where I pull the speed slider down, pull the speed control down so that you just hear that extra push on the note. You hear that extra effort that the player is going to to really push that note out. And by altering that control, you know, alongside the dynamics and alongside the vibrato, and you get an, an amazing extra amount of um, of control over how your melodies are, are being played back and when you put all of these things together with all of the different sections it really does make a, a massive difference to the to the end result so that's the legato that's how that works polyphonic legato we've just limited to two layers in the in this demo tester patch but with the full library you can increase that number and basically what this does we were unsatisfied with the traditional way of polyphonic legato, which is where you just play your chords in, you play your parts, and the computer tries to work out which note is supposed to be going to which. And, it, and so it's great if you have a series of chords, three note chords, and you're just changing them all at the same time, 
absolutely brilliant, no problem. When you start doing more polyphonic writing, and you have two notes held, one note changes, you start to get glitches coming in, and it sometimes gets confused, especially if the notes are not spaced widely enough apart. And so we decided that the best way around this was to um, to be able to build into the system. You can play it, and it's going to play back perfectly every single time. Not only that, but what? how could you make it so that you could cross the parts over and the the actual legato transitions would be correct. The best way to do this is the way that we've discovered to set the the uh, polyphonic legato to sense velocity. So it looks for um, it looks for how many parts you're playing, in this case two parts, and it will divide the velocity range into two in this instance or if you're playing three parts it would divide it into three and then anything that happens in the top half of the velocity range will be one part which all the transitions will be correct irrespective of the pitches and then everything that happens in the bottom is a separate part so the two won't affect affect each other so if I, I can do this now um, let's um, go back to our tree mic I'm gonna play softly um, down here oops down here and I'm going to play loud uh, or harder on the keyboard up here. And I'm going to sh just show you that you, the two can actually be totally independent. So here's the soft part. So you can hear there, I'm, I'm playing hard with my right hand up this end and soft with my left hand down this end. The easiest way to do this and the best way, the way that I like to do it is basically to play the part, the first part in. So I, I have a, a nice melody part that does its own thing. I then just quickly go into the, to the, to the uh, track in my, in my door and I drag all the velocities to the correct level. So I just set them all to one, two, seven in this case. And then I'd set all the others to like, you know, five or something. So you've got, so you, um, and then if we had three parts and I'd maybe use one, two, seven, sixty-four and five or something like that, or one or whatever. And then the, it's it plays back immaculately every time, exactly correct, exactly what you intend it to play. Um you don't have any kind of fiddling around trying to make it work and thinking, oh I'll have to change that part because it's getting confused. This is a great a great way to do polyphonic legato, we think. So that's all of that. Now um round robin resets. Let's look at the key switches. You can key switch here. You can see that they're down here and the um, they're red and then the active one is, is this orange color which is the third one, spiccato one. If I change that, it changes to the bottom one. That's set at the moment to the bottom A, um, starting at the bottom A on the, on the keyboard. I can use this control here to move those around just by clicking and dragging left and right. And then I'll set them back to where they were. Um, if I want to, um, if I want to have my round robin reset, you can see that when we go onto a, onto an articulation that has round robin. Um, oh, and by the way, these are only two in the demos, but they're actually eight round robins for um, all of these nice shorts like the spiccato and the pizzicato um, in the full library. So we have our round robin reset key switches as well. And that's also in a little group, in this case a group of two, and you can reset, you can drag this to move that around the keyboard as well. So um, at the moment I've left that set to C1, so if I hit C1 in my sequence it will, the next note will here will be round robin 1. If I hit C sharp the next note will be round robin 2. So that's a good way to control which exact round robin you're hearing when you're programming in your um, your parts. You can also use reset on transport which just means that every time you stop and press play on your on your door it will reset to the first round robin for everything. So those are the round robin controls. Um, there are various ways that you can change articulations here. Um, with this little lock symbol we're in unlocked at the moment but we can lock to an articulation by by clicking that and now it will there are no key switches as you can see. Um, it's set to the pizzicato and if I click on something else it's not going to change. So that's the locked articulation.
We can also have locked key switch as an alternative option and we can have locked to UEC which if you look at our website and look in the news section you'll see that we have um, started to define a um, universal articulation control change which is a way of having a single CC that you can use a single value on there to control any articulation amongst any of our libraries and we're trying to expand this out and make it um, useful as a kind of universal tool and we're still in, in the in the process of working out how that's going to work but at the moment we have a, a default setup which is which we're setting all of our libraries to so that this will work with everything that we've done um, so that's quite useful you can read more about that on the website um, and then if we if I unlock that um, there is also a user definable CC if you just literally want to be able to switch between two two of these and you want to use um, the uh, just an, any CC it's defaults to 32 um, and it basically, however many articulations are um, available, it will divide that the range of that CC, in this case 32, into that number. So in this case it would be 4. Um, so as you move that CC through from, from 1 up to 127, you'll go through the articulation. So that's the user definable one. And if you want to change it, obviously, again, control click remove MIDI automation and then relearn it with the appropriate CC that you want to use. Um, within the actual articulations themselves, if you command click on the Mac or control on the PC, one of the articulations here, you'll see that you get a variety of extra options for how you can activate these articulations. So we've got activation or latch. So activate means that it just stays. Uh, until some other command is received. Latch means that it's a it's like an active control rather than a passive one. So when you latch, um, for example, the sustain pedal, this is this one's set to the sustain pedal. If you latch, it means that while you're holding the pedal down, this will happen. When you let go, it goes back to where it was before. So we can show you that um, with the let's do that with Supercato actually. Yeah. So none of these are set up at the moment. But so let's um, command click. We'll do latch with CC64, and then I'll switch to the pizzicatos. And if I'm playing along here, and then I push the sustain pedal down, it switches. If I let go of the sustain pedal, it goes back to where we were, which is pizzicato. Another quick way of doing something cool here is if we say activate with um, you can use note actually that gives you a, a nice green key switch so you can actually switch these key switches off altogether and then just use this system set up your own new key switches you can drag them around as before and then you'll have your own uh, user-defined set of key switches that doesn't depend on the order that we've laid things out in fully uh, fully definable there well you've got MIDI as well so you can set the MIDI channel for each articulation and then set Omni up here and then they'll all respond on their own MIDI channels that's quite useful and then we've got velocity so if we go um, back into there and set that to velocity as well so we've got um, pizzicatos on let's put them from 93 to 127 and then uh, we'll set the spiccatos for 1 to 92 so now if I play softly I get spiccato if I play hard I get the pizzicatos and then back to spics so you can hear that's a great way of doing that and you can set as many as these up and it really gives you a huge amount of control over how how you um, set your your things up so you can have um, different kinds of spiccato or short notes all on one setting with the with the velocity control and then the other way of doing these is to use the groups so we could have like I was saying we could have for example pizzicato and Bartok pizzas in group one control by velocity and then uh, we could have the short notes the spiccatos staccatos things like that in group two controlled by their own velocity ranges and then the way that you switch between them you could use key switches so that when you key switch to the spiccatos you're getting all of those groups uh, on their velocity and when you key switch back to the pizzicatos you're getting all of those velocities all of in that group in other words 
within each group you'll only hear those those grouped articulations and then to switch from group to group you use a traditional control like a key switch so that's an incredibly useful tool to have as well um, so I think that explains pretty much everything in the um, I'll just load the violins up quickly while I'm thinking I think that explains everything that we've got in here um, <clears throat> So you can hear you've got a little test section with the um, with the violin ones. Um, let's do a bit of uh, control here again. Um, so you can hear all of those controls, same kind of thing. We've got the um, the lovely old legatos. Um, and all of the controls that you recognize from before so and then we've just put in from volume 2 just a little quick uh, pizzicato oops <laughs> a little taster of the bases in there as well so have fun with the with these demo patches I hope I've explained everything correctly obviously we're not going to be able to do kind of individual support on these because for obvious reasons but um, but we hope that you're going to enjoy having a look at, at some of the um, some of the kind of slightly reduced functionality articulations within the Sable library. And um, thank you very much for watching.